Critical Periods of Breast Development Adult breasts are more complex than most people realize. The breast extends from the collarbone to the lower ribs and from the sternum or breastbone to the armpit. The breast, which consists of fat surrounding mammary tissues, rests on top of the pectoralis muscle, commonly known as the pecs. Blood circulates through the breast, bringing nutrition and oxygen to the cells of the area. The lymphatic system also travels through the breast, ending at lymph nodes on the edges of the breast, especially in the region of the armpit and the collarbone. The lymph nodes collect cellular debris and help initiate immune responses to anything threatening such as bacteria or viruses. The ductal system or mammary tissue is the critical part of the breast. Each breast has about six to eight milk ducts that travel from small bulbs called labules within the breast and terminate at the nipple. When stimulated by the hormones of pregnancy and birth, the labules produce milk. The complexity of the ductal system depends on various factors, including age and reproductive history. In the United States, most but certainly not all women who are diagnosed with breast cancer are postmenopausal. However, exposure to the causes of cancer can occur much earlier in life. A growing body of evidence suggests that there are certain critical periods of susceptibility for cells of the mammary system. Critical periods of susceptibility refer to the times during a woman's life when there is the highest likelihood for a woman's mammary tissue to acquire mutations in DNA and or to undergo other cellular changes underlying the development of cancer. The most noticeable changes in breast development occur during puberty. However, even in the womb, a very simple mammary system and nipples develop along with our other organs. This is a period of intense growth for the entire body. Levels of toxins and estrogens in the mother's body greatly affect the fetus, with some effects having profound and long-term consequences. Some studies have shown that breast cancer occurs in women exposed to higher levels of hormones prenatally or neonatally four times more than in women exposed to average levels of prenatal hormones. Likewise, women exposed to unusually low levels of estrogen while in the womb acquire breast cancer half as often as those exposed to average levels. Bodies change a great deal from birth until puberty. This is a time of growth of the entire body, including the ductal system. Exposure at young ages to chemicals that influence growth and development of the mammary system can occur without knowledge of the dangers. For example, many young children drink large quantities of apple juice. However, most apples are sprayed with many pesticides that may be estrogenic and therefore may alter breast cell development. At puberty, hormonal changes precede the outward physical appearance of breasts by a few years. Hormones cause rapid growth of breast cells during adolescence. Mammary tissue grows under the nipple. Stem cells or precursor cells turn into ductal cells and lobular cells. Ductal tissue begins to grow, divide, and form terminal end buds. The ductal system grows in a tree-like structure. The lobules also increase in size and begin to differentiate into smaller bunches contained within the entire bundle. During adolescence, mammary cells are especially susceptible to carcinogens because there are more cells going through mitosis. The presence of estrogen can decrease the efficacy of genes that proofread mistakes. Thus, in adolescence, these mistakes might not be corrected and continue to replicate at a fast rate. In addition, this is a time when many new cell-cell interactions are being established in the developing mammary system. Links have been found between women's diet and adolescence and their later risk of breast cancer. Drinking alcohol during adolescence and early adulthood has been shown to increase estrogen as well as the risk for developing breast cancer as an adult. In addition, many young girls begin using more personal care products such as fragrances and cosmetics, many of which contain estrogenic chemicals. 
During pregnancy, the internal mammary structures become more complex than in the adolescent breast. Around the third trimester, the lobules differentiate into much smaller units, similar to bunches of grapes on vines. The smaller units are called the cini, and they are capable of producing milk. Full differentiation of mammary cells occurs through breastfeeding at the end of the first full-term pregnancy. Many hormones, but especially estrogens, control the processes of cellular differentiation and proliferation. Lactation continues to be a time when the breasts are extremely susceptible to estrogenic activity. Interestingly, breastfeeding is also a time when women get rid of a great deal of the built-up toxins that have been stored in their breast fat over the months and years prior to their pregnancy. While this is beneficial to the mothers, it is possibly detrimental to the infants who receive the toxins through their early food supply. As a woman enters menopause, her ovaries stop secreting regular amounts of hormones. As menopause progresses, the ductal and lobular systems in her breasts regress to simpler structures that look like those found in adolescence and before pregnancy. As the mammary system becomes smaller, most of the tissue remaining in the postmenopausal woman's breasts is therefore fat. This is true whether or not a woman has given birth or breastfed. Still, the slight but significant protective effects of pregnancy and lactation remain even after menopause, suggesting a long-lasting effect of pregnancy and breastfeeding on the cellular biology of the breast. Like many cancers, breast cancer tends to develop later in life. As a woman ages, the cumulative effects of reproductive history, genetic, lifestyle, and environmental effects can interact to increase the likelihood that multiple mutations will lead to breast cancer.